Sup, ladies and gentlemen, Aquilon here, and welcome back to each one of you. And of course, if you are new to the channel, thank you so much for joining us. I am very happy to have you here. Today's video is a difficult one. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it took me about two weeks to put this video together to figure out exactly what I want to say, how I want to say it. It is talking about the chasm that is currently being created and sort of have been uh, forming uh, since really legion within the player base of world of warcraft and i think this is a discussion that absolutely has to happen if we are ever going to have any chance of bridging that gap coming together and actually making some real change now if you like me you believe that this is an important topic and this is a topic that you think more people should see maybe you have a friend that you think could benefit from this topic i'm gonna ask you to hit that like button give it a quick spanky spank that's all i ask from you turn that little button blue and it's gonna help the algorithm see hey people love this video let's show it to even more people but then i'm gonna ask you a question before we even get into the video and i want you to write in the comment section right now because yes comments help as well with the algorithm but i want to know something before we even start this video where do you fall on world of warcraft currently are you one of the players that believe that world of warcraft is fine shadowlands is great there's no reason to panic or are you one of the players that think eh, there's some reason to panic there is something that needs to be discussed there's things that need to be changed i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below but remember where you wrote your comment because at the end of this video i'm going to ask you to comment again and we'll see if your mind has been changed in any way, shape, or form. Now, before we get into the video, allow me to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Alex, quickly drop me uh, into the video before we even get to the sponsorship part. I just want to say, for those of you that don't want to have your time wasted, the video is divided into different chapters. You'll check the timeline down below. You can skip to wherever it is that you think is the most important content. I would argue all of it is important, but hey, I don't want to waste your time. You don't deserve your time wasted, so make use of that that is why it exists. And then, of course, just a final notice to all of the patrons and the Twitch subs. Thank you so much. Thanks to you guys. Videos like this is possible and this channel is possible. Hopefully your names are on the screen to show how much we love you. And with that, let's get into the video. Skillshare is a massive online platform where millions of people around the world go every single day to learn more about themselves, to hone the skills that they were born with, sometimes even honing skills that they weren't born with. Take me, for example. I'm currently doing a class on Instagram-worthy photography. Now, any one of you that's ever followed me on Instagram will know I don't know how to take pictures. I suck at it. To be fair, I suck at social media in general, but pictures is the one thing I really suck at. I don't do it well. So I've been watching this video by Brandon uh, Wolfel that, that sort of helps you, well, teaches you ways to take better pictures. Am I going to learn much? Of course I am. It's Skillshare. Every single class that is on Skillshare is optimized for learning. So they go through different angles. What time of the day is the best time to shoot? When you have low light, how can you improve the quality of your picture? So all of that is, is things that I think I should know as a content creator and specifically as a content creator that sucks at photography. But that's not all they have. If you don't care about photography, there literally is a limitless amount of classes here. You can learn to chop like a chef. There's literally knife classes on Skillshare, photography, editing, how to grow successful careers, not just on content creation, but success in the workplace, how to be a better employee, how to be a better boss, Whatever it is that you think you should know, Skillshare most likely have a class available to you. And the people over on Skillshare is so amazing that for the first thousand people, they will offer, offer a free trial to premium Skillshare if you click the link in the description down below. And after that, it's less than $10 a month on an annual subscription to get access to the world and all of its knowledge. So really, what do you have to lose? Click that link and move into the 21st century. It's that easy. Now, before we can have any sort of discussion, we have to talk about the different groups that I'm going to be discussing and talking about in this video and the different groups that I'm going to be talking to in this video. 
There are two groups that is fundamentally excluded from this conversation. These are the Blizzard Shills and the Blizzard N Negative Nellies, right? Uh, so those two groups are completely excluded from this conversation. And when I say shill, I'm not talking about someone who just defends Blizzard. I'm talking about people who will go above and beyond to defend Blizzard, oftentimes lying, coming up with fallacious arguments, or just being irrational in their defense of Blizzard. So they'll try and turn your argument around on you in a very dishonest way. I have no interest in talking to people from this group. The other group is the Negative Nellies. These are the people that will complain regardless. Let's say the next expansion Blizzard brings out after Shadowlands is absolutely bonkers, ball to the wall, best expansion Blizzard have ever made. They will go, oh yeah, but remember BFA and Shadowlands? How shit was that? Remember when Blizzard did this? Remember when Blizzard this, th did this? They'll criticize Blizzard even if there's nothing to actually criticize Blizzard for, they'll find a reason to criticize. Again, these are irrational actors. There's no reason to discuss anything with them. Instead, the two groups that I will be focusing on in this video is the Blizzard Faithful. These are players who, yes, sometimes they recognize that there might be things that's not as much fun, but they'll, they'll defend it. You will defend it saying things like, well, it doesn't matter. I don't mind it. It doesn't affect me. So it's cool. Uh, you know, I don't mind doing this content because at the end of the day, it gets me to where I want to be. And that's really the content that I focus on. So these are the Blizzard faithful. They don't want to focus on the negative stuff. They want to focus on the positive stuff. And they don't really understand why people want to focus on the negative when there are positives in the game as well. And the other group is what I would call the Bl Blizzard critics, which I'm a part of. These are players that recognize that there are some faults within Blizzard. They understand that there are very cool things and that some things in World of Warcraft really works well, but that there are some fundamental issues that they do not necessarily agree with and that they wish would be changed. I'm going to talk to you. These two groups is what I find very important. And now that we've identified and sort of hopefully agreed upon the rules of this conversation and who this conversation is for, let's start with the actual conversation. I'm going to start off with a posit, uh, a, a sort of statement, and I want you to tell me in the comment section down below if this statement is true or false. Statement time. You can absolutely develop a game where every single element of the game will appeal to every single gamer in the world so if there is a 100 million or 200 million gamers in the world all 200 million gamers will love your game and they will love every single part of your game you can absolutely design a game like that is that statement true or is that statement false i'm assuming by now all of you have written down false because we all know that this is simply not possible. You can't design games like that because games are subjective. They're art forms. And for that very reason, two people can look at the same painting. One person loves the painting. Another person can't fucking understand what they're doing there. I'm usually the second guy. I don't understand what I'm doing there. Uh, but, you know, sometimes I can see beautiful paintings. Sometimes I don't understand what they are. Especially modern art. Absolutely sucks. But, um... Germania will know what, I talk, what I'm talking about when I say I don't understand um, art all that well. But, you know, I can, I can appreciate beauty when there's beauty in the air. But gaming is subjective. It's a very subjective thing. And there sadly isn't much that you can do if a game does not appeal to a specific group of the player base. Now, here's the thing. When you're making a single player game, and I would posit that this statement, the following statement, is absolutely true. Every single video game is designed and developed for a niche audience. This is true, I think, across the board for every single video game. They're all niche. No video game is going to appeal to a very large group of the player base or even to all players or the majority of players within the player base. For single player games, this is fairly easy, right? You design the game for the niche and that's it. That's really all you're focusing on. For live service games like Ubisoft's uh, The Division or something like Outriders from Square Enix, you design the game for that specific niche and then you figure out how do you monetize that niche that the game was designed for. But what happens when you have an MMO? How do you do it within an MMO? Well, this is where things get actually a little bit more tricky. Because in an MMO, you 
automatically appeal to a much larger group of players, a group of players with different interests. Almost every single game in the MMO genre is made up of PvE players, PvP players, uh, hardcore players, casual players, collectors, uh, and in the collectors there's subsets and subgroups within that, RP players. All of these players exist in every single MMO genre, in every single MMO game. So how do you make a game that actually appeals to all of these people equally? We just discussed it. I just asked you the question. Is it possible to design a game where every single one of those players, your PvPers, your PvEers, your Hardcore, your Casual, your RP, your Collectors, where all six of these groups, and there's plenty of other groups as well if we wanted to start going through all the groups, but where all six of these groups would actually enjoy every single thing within your game? And the answer is an, a resounding absolutely not it it's simply not doable now for all the blizzard faithful allow me to explain why we the critics have such a big issue with world of warcraft at the moment it's because blizzard does not understand this most basic of fundamental game philosophies you cannot make everyone happy so why is it that blizzard continuously tries this is the biggest issue there is no one on my side of the argument and i promise you that there's not a single person on my side of the argument that is arguing that certain things should be completely removed from the game we don't think that you should lose the ability to do world quest if you like world quest we don't think that you should lose the ability to do torghost if you like torghost we don't think that you should lose the ability to collect mounts or pets or rp if those are the things that you like what we ask and what we're arguing about is why am I forced to do all of these things that I don't want to do? Why is it that I have to do Torghast, even though Torghast maybe doesn't appeal to me? Why is it that I'm forced to do world quests every single day, every single patch, until the end of an expansion, when really I don't want to do world quests, I don't like the world quests? The biggest issue that myself and other critics right now within World of Warcraft have is the interconnectivity of the game. The fact that every single system is connected to every other system. That's the issue. The issue isn't the systems. The systems is fine because the systems aren't meant for everyone. They're very clearly designed for a very specific subset of the player base. The problem is that Blizzard then connects them to all of the player base. Now I hear immediately a lot of you going, oh wait, Aklon, so basically what you're saying is you just don't want the grind. You want to be able to get in and only do what you want to do and then be bored for the rest of time because, you know, there is no grind left. Not really. That's not what I'm saying. Grinds are extremely important in every single MMO, but grinds are very specific things in MMOs. A grind is a means to an end. You grind so that you can get somewhere. And then once you reach the place that you wanted to go, this is then where you go, okay, good, I'm done. The grind is over. And no system highlights this or, or shows this more clearly than the old daily system. You see, dailies were very important for the first month or two of an expansion while you were trying to get to Exalted with every single one of the reputations. But then once you were Exalted, dailies fell off hard. There, there was really no reason to do any dailies in the game anymore. You've done your grind, you've paid your dues, you are done. And then it opened up the game for alts, because with your alt, you wouldn't farm every single one of the dailies for every single one of the uh, reputations. You would only do the reputations that was really important to you, thereby making it far more alt-friendly right out of the gate. But this is the issue with modern day World of Warcraft. This is where modern day World of Warcraft falls completely flat. Because in modern day World of Warcraft, there is no end to the endless grind of meaningless content. Something like World Quests. No one can tell me that World Quests is a giant success. The best I've ever heard from people 
is that they don't mind World Quest. And we're going to get into that defense of content in a little while. But that's the base defense that I've ever heard from players is I don't mind uh, the content. I don't mind World Quest. The fact of the matter is World Quest should be linked to a reputation. Once that reputation is achieved, you're done. You never have to do World Quest again. From this moment forward, you can focus on the things that you wish to focus on. You can focus on the gameplay elements that you like most within the game. That's the point of a grind. What we have right now in World of Warcraft is a perpetual grind with no clear line of victory. There is no checkered flag at the end of the road because every single time you cross the checkered flag, there's another lap that needs to be completed. And that is a big issue for a lot of critics that say, wait a second, we don't want to do all this boring content every single fucking patch. At some point, I just want to start focusing on the things that I like doing. The best defense uh, that I've heard in the last two years for World of Warcraft has been, I don't mind. Uh, some defenses that come really close to that defense is things like, well, if you don't like it, don't play it. If you don't want to do it, stop playing. Um, those are sort of the only defenses right now that, that really comes for a lot of the systems within World of Warcraft. Torghast, for example. I get a lot of people saying, I don't mind Torghast. I get very few people that say, I love Torghast. I do have to say there are some, and I actually do include myself in that list. Torghast is a mindless, fun thing for me. I don't, I think it could be far better, don't get me wrong, but I don't hate Torghast. I'm not in the hate camp for Torghast. But even I can't say that Torghast is amazing. I can say that I don't mind Torghast and that it's mildly fun for me. But here's the issue. Not minding something is not a very good explanation for why you're paying money for it. Here's the truth. You don't mind your job. This is why you are paid to do your job, because you don't mind your job. Some people hate their job, and that's a whole different story. But of course, for the vast majority of people, they don't mind their job, but you wouldn't pay to do your job, would you? If tomorrow your boss came to you and said, oh, by the way, if you're going to do your job, you now have to pay us. Most of you would quit your job. There's no point. If they're not going to give me money for it, I'm not going to do it. A video game is meant to be fun. That's why video games exist. They exist for our entertainment. They are fun. Here's the issue. I don't mind it does not equate to fun. I don't mind sitting here staring at my wall. I don't. I can actually do that for a long time and I probably wouldn't feel too horrible for doing it. Would I pay to do that? Hell no. I wouldn't because it's sort of boring and it's not really that fun. The whole point of video games are to be entertainment. They're to be fun. So not minding something in a video game really does not justify the cost of said video game. Now, there's always going to be things within a video game that we don't like that we sort of have to contain with. But that's the point. Those things should have an end. And there should be a point where you can only now focus on the things that you find fun and you no longer have to waste your time on the things that you do not find fun. More importantly, there should be a clear divide between the things that you definitely do not want to do and the things that you sort of mildly, mildly don't mind doing. So the things that is a grind, for example, versus the things that is supposed to be a completely different system. Torghast and World Quest is a good example of this. World Quest is out in the world. You should do it at least for a month or two of a new expansion, right? Because, yeah, you are in this new expansion. You're trying to make friends. That's the point. Torghast is a whole different system. It's a system that should not be tied to player power and it should not be forced upon anyone that doesn't wish to engage with it. That is a real issue and something that Blizzard should absolutely look at. And I will end the conversation on this. Next time you see someone making a negative video or writing a negative post on the forums, try to understand that 
The negativity really is aimed at trying to fix fundamental flaws within the game that a player may or may not be experiencing. It has nothing to do with clicks because making videos for negative clicks is actually a very bad idea. The vast majority of channels that try it generally fail and you lose your negative audience. Specifically, someone like myself, Palila, Pyromancer, uh, Salt or Breezy, Mr. GM, take your pick. All of the content creators that pretty much make exclusive World of Warcraft content. If I start shitting on the game and I only shit on the game, the the, the amount of audience that I'm going to have left within a year is going to half itself, if not more. Because those people will stay around for a little while because we're all negative together. But then they'll start moving on to other content because what's the point? They're done with WoW. They've, they've stopped playing. So negative content really isn't a, a long-term growth success metric. Uh, so get over that idea that content creators are just making content to be negative. The fact of the matter is we're making content to try and change things. And sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes we get the wrong idea. Sometimes we have the wrong fix and that's perfectly fine. And you are welcome to engage with that fix and say why you think it is wrong. But not everything that is done is done in bad faith. And I hope that this video sort of highlighted some of that. It's not, I'm not critical of World of Warcraft because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be critical of World of Warcraft. I'm critical because I'm being forced into things that I don't necessarily want to do, but I have no choice because Blizzard is forcing me into the things that I don't necessarily wish to do. That's the biggest issue here. This is a very difficult topic to approach. It's a very difficult topic to actually express in words. Believe me, I've, I've spent two weeks and I still don't feel like I've done it enough justice. I still feel like there's a lot of things that I should have said differently or a lot of things that I should, should still have covered, but I don't want to keep wasting your time. I don't want to keep taking any more of your time. I think that the bare bones is there and I think the basics of the conversation at least now lies open and everyone can see where everyone else is coming from. I can't speak for where the Blizzard Faithful is coming from because I'm not part of that group. And also that group is not really the group right now that is sort of stirring the most. It is the critics that is stirring, it is the critics that is upset and they're causing a lot of upset in the faithful because the faithful just wants to get on with their day. They don't really want to waste their time listening to people being critical of their game, which is perfectly understandable. But I think if you understand and hopefully you now understand where some of that critical uh, critic, uh, critique comes from, hopefully you understand that it is at the end of the day us trying to do the right thing and us trying to make the game better for everyone. I don't, I certainly do not argue that any of your favorite systems should be removed from the game. I'm simply arguing that I shouldn't be forced to engage with your favorite systems when they're not my favorite systems. And I don't want you to engage with my favorite systems if they're not your favorite systems. That is the simple argument. That is simply what most negative or critics of World of Warcraft currently is saying. That's it. Now I'm going to ask you again like I asked you in the beginning. After watching all of the video, or at least some of the video, what are your thoughts? Have I changed your mind in any way, shape, or form? Do you see things now more clearly than what maybe you saw before? Maybe you moved over to the critic side, or maybe from the critic side, I convinced you to move over to the Blizzard Faithful side. I'd love to hear what you have to say in that comment section down below. So respond to your own comment and tell me how your mind may or may not have changed throughout this video. And then, of course, to all of the patrons, the Twitch subs, and the YouTube channel members, thank you so much for your monthly contributions. It does mean the world to me. Thanks to you guys, this channel is still growing, and it's growing stronger every single day. I quite literally wouldn't be here without you, so I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Remember to slap a like on this video, hit that subscribe button, smash that bell. Uh, it does help out. All of it helps out uh, in the algorithm, so I literally can't thank you guys enough for all of your support. Take care of yourselves, take care of your family members and your loved ones. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Peace out, fam.